Okay. Is it recording? It's recording. Okay, this is recording. It's yours recording? Yep. <laughs> nothing like <clears throat> nothing like shooting an entire show and then starting over from scratch. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> and welcome to the show. I think we're gonna call it a recipe for love. I'm your host, Jared. This right here is my co-host and lovely bride, Jesse Wee! Jesse Wee! Oh Jesse Wee! Jesse Wee, as we were talking about in the previous episode that we just filmed inside the vehicle, we are on our way to go see Asher Cat play foosball, which is your nephew, my nephew, and Adelaide cheerlead. Oh, so cute. It's so precious. They're 12 and 8, so little guys. But the, the topic that I want to tackle today actually is a question that was sent in from Kelly, and she said, how do you prioritize Jesus in your relationship when you are insanely busy? Oh. Insanely busy. Yeah, that's good. And I think that relates because we are insanely busy. So crazy busy. Like, Absolutely insanely busy. This is the busiest semester I've had in all my education. And You've had a lot of education. I've had a lot of education and I am... Educated? I have no time. I have no time for anything. But I promised Asher before the season started, before the semester started, I promised him I would make a game. And I have no time. But I made a promise. And so I, I feel... I felt like I needed to prioritize this to be there for him. And so I put my homework down. I'm really stressed about it, but it'll be there when I go home and it's gonna be okay. Yeah. But I think that's kind of the point. The reason why I'm saying that is because if you make spending time with God a priority in your life, then you feel that urgency. If you say, you know, God, I promise I'm gonna spend more time with you and you don't, yeah. you're gonna notice. Like, um, I do. I sure do. If if I go even a day, something creeps into just my habits, my thoughts. My thoughts are a little bit darker. I'm, I'm more focused on what's in it for me. And I believe it's called something to the effect of what we in church business call it, walking in the flesh. So all of the desires of your flesh, all the temptation of like pleasing man, all that sort of stuff starts to creep into your mind whenever it's not fixated on Jesus. And so within, like even within a day, even within 10 minutes, I can notice if my mind isn't scrubbed up and clean, if my mind hasn't been fixating upon Jesus, if I haven't been like asking him in a conversation, what's going on, what's happening here, or if I haven't dedicated like time in the word, then I'm just, <clears throat> I'm thinking about me and mine. I'm thinking about fleshly things. I'm thinking about eating. I'm thinking about sex. I'm thinking about working harder. I'm thinking about somebody's got something better than I've got. I'm thinking about all the fleshly things rather than him. And that's why I've actually been so impressed with with you when you had this insanely crazy school schedule, but you'll come home in the middle of the day or sometimes before you leave and you will carve out time. And I know it's not perfect, but you will carve out time to sit with Jesus and write what he's saying and pray and read the word. Why do you do that? I I have to. I mean, I'll, I'll go a day or two. I'm so busy. I'll go a day or two without my daily devotion. And like, I used to do my daily devotion, devotion every morning before work. And I don't have time. Before work, I'm doing homework. At work, I'm working. After work, I'm doing homework. And then I go to class and then I come home and I'm doing homework. Like, there's no time. So. But like, I found that I do I do have spare moments. I'll have a spare 15 minutes or a spare 30 minutes and I'm like I have to I have to use it because it's the only thing I have and yes, I could sit down and watch a TV show, but that's not going to fill me up like Jesus does. I came home one day and I was just discouraged and I was depleted and I was distracted. And I you were there, he was home and I was like I really want to hang out, but I've got to yeah. And so I sat down, pulled out my devotion, and I I just wrote down my prayers, and I asked God to speak to me, and I wrote down what He said to me, and I felt different. And it just kind of reminded me that this needs to be a priority. I need to carve out time. We need to carve out time to worship God together or pray, yeah. you know, pray together or whatever, because you just, your mind gets all messed up when you don't. Yeah. Well, I've noticed that there's there's also no getting me out of a rut if, say, if I, I come home, speaking to the relational side of things, if I want to be with Jesse or if I want to be, um, 
you know, go out to dinner or whatever, whatever it is. I don't know, just hang out on the couch, whatever it is. If I come home in a funk, or if we encounter one another in a funk, there's no getting me out if we haven't spent intentional time seeking the Lord. And one of the most, well, here's a key. Here's one of the key things that if I could pass on to anybody out there, it's it's learning to pray together and seek Him together. It, that's the whole bonding of the relationship. Um, otherwise, you're going to be stuck in the flesh. There was, for instance, there was when Jesse came home the other night. Uh, she had just been caught up in some lies and some uh, just demonic attacks about not being smart enough. Just all sorts of things around class. And she could not hear me whenever I told her that I loved her. She could care less. But what we do have is a fallback in we've we've been conditioned to when we're in that place when we recognize one another in that place of despair and lack of hope we say all right let's stop let's pray let's what's jesus say about that or let me can i pray for you and i was able to pray for her and i can't tell you how many countless times i've come in uh, even today before we were filming all this stuff i know that my wife is praying for me or she'll stop or i'll stop just the whole situation say let's see what jesus has to say and when we like it's not physically bend our knee, but when we in our hearts bend our knee to Him, it, it connects us closer together. Yeah. Like, it brings me back into my right mind. And I think there's a misconception that spending time with God requires hours. Oh, where it really doesn't. Moment. I mean, sure, hours would be great, you know, but like, it could be five minutes, it could be two minutes, it could be 15 minutes. Like, it doesn't have to be the majority of your day, like, it I, drives there's, me. there's like a bad connotation there for really is. I, I think th I'm about to say something terrible but hopefully you get my heart in this people who say I spent you know I make sure you're spending time in the word and I spent three hours in the word this morning I, I think maybe they're getting some spiritual truths and God is, God is working some stuff over in their heart but time with Jesus like when I start to read the word he opens up layer upon layer of my life and that happens in the first couple of seconds. It, it can happen driving down the road. I could say, Lord, what do you think about, and I, I hear his voice. I feel his, his spiritual presence with me begin to illuminate things. And he could show me a nugget that he could say in 10 seconds that will take me three months to three years to unpack. And so whenever I say I spent, you know, I spent time with the Lord this, this morning, it may have been a 10 second conversation. Yeah that I'm going to be processing for the next three months of my life. And I don't understand people who go into the closet and say, I spent three hours. Did you get your hours in this morning with the Lord? Well, sit. <laughs> and I was wrecked in, inside of five minutes. So, uh, yeah. no, I wasn't able to speak. I was weeping for the next 30. So. And not that three hours or five hours yeah. or whatever Time is bad. Is We're not saying that. We're just saying that it doesn't have to be like that. It can be a moment of clarity. It can be a five-minute prayer or a two-minute prayer or think, stopping with your husband and saying, I need help. I think it's essential whenever you're on a schedule or in a season like we're in, you're not going to have three hours to sit and meditate upon the Lord. If you do, if you feel like He's wanting you to carve out that time, you need to do that. Yeah, you no must more. do that. Because there are times when it may be busy and He still says, I want that hour and a half before you go to work. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's your contract between you and Him. Yes. But... On the regular, if you're just going and you, you, you feel that disconnect, he's a breath away. He's, he's yeah. a second away. So, I, anyway, just that, like the key of keeping one another before Jesus, with Jesus, tapped into Jesus, I think is absolutely essential. Yeah. Does that answer that question? Yeah, I think so. So, Kelly, there's your answer. I, and this, we were actually talking about this the other day. If Jesus isn't at the center, I, this is cliche as all get out, but if we aren't actively, individually working towards Jesus, being informed by Jesus, being loved on by Jesus, then our relationship is doomed. I don't care how, how much we love each other now, all of the insecurities and all the darkness finds its way of working its way in and causing separation and division. It's what the enemy is here to do, steal, kill, and destroy. Steal joy, steal peace, steal love from the relationship, destroy, kill, all that stuff to choke you out. But a connection where her heart is on Jesus, she's going to be able to pull me out of the way. When my heart's on, on Jesus, I'm going to be able to pull her out of the way. And it's like that pyramid. I can't do a pyramid because I'm driving. It's like that pyramid. If we're both working towards Jesus, she from her side, me from my side, we are going to be closer together. Yeah, that's true.
It doesn't matter about time. Nope. Take two seconds. Did that answer it? Yep. You gonna call it there? Nailed it. You put, nailed it! <laughs> we don't lack confidence on this channel. We know exactly what the answer is. Well, there, we know. This is not just our opinion. This is fact, this is fact. babe. Well, we know what works for us. We, we know what we're talking about. I don't want to come off as a, guys, we don't want to come off as an expert at all in really any field. We're just on the on the traffic highway of life and and moving along. But at the same time, we know love. I, I, I love this woman. I love love. I've, I've met with, at this point, I wouldn't say thousands, but a lot of people. A lot, hundreds of people in the area of love and relationship and deeper connection and you see certain patterns over time and this is the key thing would be to fix your eyes upon Jesus yeah. and let him work stuff out number two which we'll talk about in a later video would be house order if the house is in order yeah, oh, that's a big one. under Jesus that's a big one people don't like they don't like oh, it they hate that we one. should probably talk about that one next yeah, time we should. Let's go, let's go check out this game. We still have about 30 minutes on the let's road. Let's do it. Turn right on in one mile. The GPS lady again. Turn right in one mile. Do you want to do an outro for this thing? Wrap it. Okay. Do it. I don't know how, how do you want to end these things? How do you want to end it? It's, a, it's our second one ever. How do you want to end it? Third one ever. How many ones are going to ever? Um, I love you. Oh. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>